In this video I'm going to cover the features and functionality of Lyrics and Chords Manager for Windows 10. Because I'll be covering many different topics, I'll try to put timestamps in the comments below so that you can jump to the part that you're interested in. Okay, so when you open Lyrics and Chords Manager for the first time, you'll just be presented with this black screen and nothing really you can do much. So you must start with entering your first song. And you can see I already have a set of songs already entered, but we're going to enter a new song. So now we'll be presented with a black blank template that we can enter our information. And I'm going to do, she's not there, by the zombies. Okay, now at this point you can set things like the key, time signature, beat per minute, Duration, I know this song is 2 minutes 24. Strumming pattern, and also if you want to use a backing track, now this could be a drumming backing track that you've created for this or whatever, uh, you can actually enter it here. So I'm going to select a backing track, and I'm just going to put the actual song in there. And what it will do now, it will copy this backing track into your music folder, into a folder called backing tracks. So now we've populated the name, we need to actually start entering the lyrics and the chords. Now you can just type these in, but I've already cut some from elsewhere, and I'm just going to paste these in. And you can see now we've got some chords and some lyrics. But what we now need to do, we need to give the app a chance to format all this and detect all the chords. So if we just click Auto Format, we have a choice of what we want things to look like and it will detect headings and chords and lyrics but I'm happy with what we have here so I'll click apply and you can see now all of the chords have now been highlighted in red and the lyrics in a light blue but also on the right here you can see that all of the chords that have been specified in here have been entered here showing all the chord shape so this is ideal if a, a guitarist can actually start playing this tune. And you can also get a sample of what these chords sound like. Just by clicking the chord. Okay, so now we've got the song already. We will store the song. And you can see it's entered it into the database with the name. Okay, you can actually make manual edits to, to this song if, if you so wish as well, put extra spaces in, if the timing's a little bit off, you can do that. So what are the functionalities in here now, one, now you've created the song? You've got the transpose, so you can actually change the key. Okay, you can actually print songs, so let's have a look at that functionality. We can click print. And we've got an option now, we can hear, it's generate a nice printout, but we can actually change, if, we just, if we're not interested in the chords, we can just change it to, yeah, so if we're not interested in the chord diagrams, we can get rid of those and just show the lyrics and the chords, okay? We can actually change the chord colour, so you can see now the chords are in red, and then when you're happy you print that out and you've got a nice print out of the song that you can use for practicing or whatever. Okay, so that is the printing functionality. Export is if you just want to, if you just want this individual song to email to a friend, it will email the actual lyrics and chords to a friend in a similar way to the print, but just uh, sending it as a, a text file. So that's the export functionality. So. Once you've populated all of your database, it could, you know you can end up with quite a big database and this might be quite difficult to search. You have the ability to sort either, you know, search in either song or artist. But if I now just want to search for, you know, she's not there, I can just type she, hit the enter and you can see it takes me straight to the song. So this is ideal if you want to quickly navigate around the song library. So that is the song library covered. So what we do now, We've got this song selected, and as soon as I click X, you can see it's now populated into the window. And at this point, I can actually resize this to what suits me the best, okay? And 
Now it's time to explain the functionality that we have here. So we've seen the song library, but we've now got a song here and we're going to use it. So it's just a case of click here, play, and it will start scrolling based on the speed that we set. I'll just stop the audio. But you can saw that, see there as well that it started playing the backing track that we uh, put in there. And the backing track is independently controllable from the actual scroll of the lyrics. This is important in case you know the lyrics get a bit ahead of you or a bit behind. You can actually control those independently without messing up your backing track and still uh, you know do a good performance. So let's just pause that song and we'll stop the audio. And then so that's the play and pause. Back to start, take you back to the beginning, and then obviously if we click play, it will kick off the audio. Okay. I cannot leave the audio on too long uh, because obviously it's a copyrighted song there. Okay, then we've got if you're in the middle of a performance, let's pause the audio. If you're in the middle of a performance and you find that you're getting ahead of the text or behind the text, you've got the ability to just skip forward just a few lines. Just like this or skip back a few lines and remember all these can be a hot can be assigned to hotkeys as well okay so that's how you control the teleprompter now let's look at the next item which is set lists so this is if you more want to perform on stage what you can do is uh, imagine if I'm performing at the NEC I could you know type NEC here and it creates a new set. And you can see there's no songs in this set. But I can think, okay, I'm gonna do a performance and I'm going to play this song on this performance, and this song, this song, and I can carry on. And once I'm happy with that set, providing this is selected, if I close now, you can see it's entered all of the songs of the set here. So I can jump between all of the different songs okay and this works in exactly the same way but the difference is once I finish a song yes scroll I can jump to the next song and be instantly playing that next song so that is set lists the next item is chord library so here are all the different chord shapes now I've populated this with the majority of some common chord shapes Okay. But you have the ability to actually create new chords yourselves or in the edit a chord and you can just click new chord and you can give it, you know, I don't know, uh, let's make it D sharp. It doesn't matter what the name is. We're just going to experiment. Okay. And it's created a new chord on the D sharp. And now we can start entering the chord pattern and we just put, you know, just put some random numbers in here just so you can see. As I'm doing this, it's actually building the chord shape and it's telling me that's invalid, it's not possible. Okay, and then when you're happy, you can also specify which finger would actually be pressing that string on the guitar. Okay, and then you can actually play what that would sound like. It'll probably sound terrible, but because it's not a chord. But when you're happy, you can save that chord and it will add it to the database and we'll cancel that. And equally, you can jump to different areas of the chord library. Okay. If these chords you don't like in here, not, not a problem. You can just delete them and uh, only leave it with chords that you, you really like to use. So that is the chord library. So let's move on now to some of the application settings. So this one, hide chords during playback. If we select that, these chords here now, when I play, they will be faded away so that it doesn't interfere with your text on the screen. So that's that feature. Always hide chords is if you're completely not interested in the chords at all, you can take that and they will be gone completely. Okay. Configure hotkeys. This will allow you to set keys and you could be using a wireless controller as well to control all of these different settings. So if you have a wireless controller, you can configure new keys. Okay. Then we go video recording. 
So this, if you want to quickly do a bit of, you know, record a YouTube video or something like that, we can just quickly enable this and you can now select which camera is active or, you know, not active. And now you've got an option here to record video and your webcam can be recording your performance. Okay. Same with audio recording. Okay, I'll just do this one because what I didn't show you is the video preview. If we select that, we also get a video preview. I don't suggest you use video preview, you know, except just for testing because that will impact the performance of your recording and it can be quite distracting. I'll be doing an update later that puts the uh, a smaller video preview. Okay, so let's turn the video recording off. Now we've got the option, we've already seen the backing track functionality but we also have the option of turning off the backing track and now having a metronome. And we've got three different types. We've got audio, video, audio, video. Okay, so I'll put it on an audio, video. We've got some other options like beats per minute and things like that. They actually takes from the configuration of the song. And then we can choose traditional square circles. So let's have a look at the traditional. Let's go like this and you can see we've got traditional metronome. And I can start it manually like this. Okay. Let's have a look at another one. Let's have a look at... Uh, you, also, you can also change the sound as well. So if we went like this. Okay. If we want uh, circles, we can see now it puts the beats at the top of the screen here. And we can there you go. This one auto start. If we enable that one, what happens is when we click play song, the metronome automatically starts. Okay. So auto smart, uh, auto start, and then we've got just size. So we can, you know we can have you really want a big uh, beats per minute there. Now we've got, obviously, you can invest a lot of time creating this database and set lists, etc., and songs. Now you may not, you know, obviously you don't want to lose that data or you also may want to share your entire database to a new user, to a friend. So what you can do, if we come here, backup song library, we can click on this, it will now Give us a file, we can change the file name, and then when we're happy, we can save the file. Okay. And then when our friend picks it up, we can restore that song library. But please be aware, it will completely overwrite your current database. So this is a backup. It doesn't actually add the database to your current songs. It is a complete replacement. So, you know, please be, uh, be careful there. Okay, so I think that covers a lot of the features of Lyrics and Chord Manager. I'm open to suggestions if you need any new features and uh, the app continues to develop over time. Okay, thank you.